So I'll be real with you guys. I'll likely be canceling my ChatGPT Plus subscription very soon. But one of the reasons why I've held on for so long is ChatGPT's memory capability paired with my three plus year chat history of everything that I've done inside this platform, which is very valuable data. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can export your entire ChatGPT history and then upload that data into a Notebook LM, a Claude, or a Google Gemini if you wanna transfer and use another AI platform. So be sure to stick around for this full video. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan. I appreciate you being here. And if you wanna know my favorite AI tools, prompts, and automation templates, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for that in the video description or pinned comment below. And also brand new for 2026, I've opened up my AI community for free. So I'll leave a link to that in the video description below as well. So you first might be wondering, well, Ryan, what's the point of exporting your chat GPT data and using that in Claude or Gemini when you could just keep using chat GPT going forward? And this is more of a personal thing for me. I have just found that in my everyday use cases of marketing, content creation, and other business tasks, I've found myself using Google Gemini and Claude every day and way more than I use OpenAI's products, especially GPT 5.2, which is OpenAI's latest model. I have not had a lot of success with that for my specific use cases. But the big value proposition here is that three plus years of chat data that I do not wanna dismiss and use that to my advantage in another AI platform. And so what you wanna do first to export this chat GPT data, and honestly, this might be useful even if you aren't going to cancel chat GPT plus, is you wanna click your profile icon on the bottom left, click settings, and then you should see an option right here where it says data controls. And then you'll see an option that says export data. So we wanna go ahead and click export, confirm export, and then you should see a message here, successfully exported data. You should receive an email shortly with your data. And so then you wanna to go to your email associated with your ChatGPT account, and you'll notice an email that looks like this from OpenAI. You've requested a copy of your ChatGPT data. Here is your export right here. Then simply click download data export. And then this will automatically go into your downloads folder and then give it a second or two so it fully downloads. All right, so after your zip file is successfully downloaded, the nice part about using a Mac is we can double click it and then it will automatically unzip that file in a few seconds, right within the downloads folder. And so once it's successfully done with this, I'm gonna give it a few seconds here, you'll notice that it pulls up my downloads folder and here is the unzipped file. This right here is my entire history of ChatGPT and all that data that I have inside my account. Now to make sure that we're not confused here, I'm first gonna go ahead and rename this folder to ChatGPT underscore data. And it's important that you name it verbatim just like that for the purposes of this tutorial, which I'll explain later on you'll need to do for a terminal command. I'll leave this in the video description below. So here's my ChatGPT data folder. Now if I click the drop down button, there's obviously a crap ton of data in here with images and chat history and any potential shopping data and all sorts of stuff here. The big thing that I care about for the purposes of this tutorial and what I'm about to show you is my entire chat history, which is a JSON file right here called conversations.json. Now you might be thinking, well, Ryan, why don't you just take this one JSON file and then use that to train everything and export that to your desktop and whatnot? There's a big problem here. This JSON file or this conversations.json file is 247 megabits. That is way too big for what we're gonna be able to do or even process. And so what we need to do is chop up that file into separate MD files. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that uh, in an efficient manner here. So I first wanted to point that out, rename your folder to chatgpt underscore data, and then explain to you the exact JSON file that we're going to be chopping up into separate files. Now this next step might be confusing to some as it confused me at first, where we need to take this one shot terminal command 
copy and paste that into the terminal application on my Mac. Now, if you're using a Windows PC, I'm not sure what the terminal application is called. I'd recommend just doing some quick research or finding another YouTube tutorial related to Windows PC. And before I show you how to do this, I first wanna give credit to Corey McLean. He's got a really great AI YouTube channel, one of the few no BS guys in this space. And that's where I first learned about this one shot terminal command. So what you wanna do, and I will share this along with his channel in the video description below, is simply copy and paste where it says one shot terminal command. You wanna start here. So let's go ahead and copy this. And then you wanna paste all the way to where it says PY at the end, but right before the dotted line. So command C, I'm gonna copy that on my clipboard. Let's pull up my terminal here. And then I'm going to paste this right inside my terminal. And then once it's pasted correctly, simply click return or enter on your keyboard. Now this will take a few seconds here, but to know that this is done correctly, you should see done right here at the very bottom. And how I know this was done correctly is it says input. Ardozer downloads chat GPT data conversations JSON. Remember, that was the name of that folder, chat GPT underscore data. And the file that I was concerned about was the conversations.json file. And for output, notice how it created a new folder called notebooklm underscore ready right inside my downloads folder. And what this is, is this is all of those MD files that are now chopped up from that huge conversations.json file, which we originally had. And so to find this, I'm gonna open up my finder, click downloads to get into my downloads folder. And then if I go ahead and let's filter by name here and then scroll down, you might need to take a little bit to find this, or maybe it's just me since I have so much chat GPT data in here, notebook LM underscore ready. This is the new folder that that created inside the terminal from that command, from that command prompt. And so if I go ahead and double click this, notice how I now have 14 separate MD files that when combined should have all of the same data and history from my entire chat GPT account. And so what I'm going to do now actually, and what I'd recommend you do is I'd recommend dragging off that notebook LM ready folder onto your desktop or somewhere that's more organized that we can access this here in the next step. Now, I forgot to mention that you can also do the same process with your Claude data. So if you're a super user of Claude and you wanna export your data from there and use it in another platform, you can do the same thing by clicking your icon on the bottom left, click settings, and then click privacy, and then simply come down here. If I click privacy and then click export data, click export, and that will send you an email with all of your exported data. I forgot to mention that as some of you might be using Claude instead of ChatGPT and wanna get your entire account history from there. So now that we have all of that chat data and chat history from my chat GPT account, we can upload it into something like Notebook LM pretty seamlessly. So if I go ahead and click create new notebook, I'm gonna just X out of this and upload it later. First name it whatever you want, chat GPT um, data or whatever you wanna do. And then simply click add sources, upload sources. And then I'm going to find that notebook LM folder on my desktop right here. And then simply come in here and then upload all of those MD files, which again is the entirety of my three plus year chat GPT account history. This is going to take a little time to upload within Notebook LM, but one of the reasons why I would recommend you do it this way versus coming into Google Gemini and trying to upload all of those MD files into the main chat of Gemini is you'll notice here, it can only upload 10 attachments at a time per chat, I believe, per chat window. And so it can only do up to 10, which obviously isn't bad, but we, I wanna get every single piece of chat GPT data that I possibly can. So that's why I'm going to use Notebook LM for this instance. And then I'm gonna show you how you can actually use this in Gemini once these are properly uploaded. So the nice part about using Notebook LM for something like this is that it can extract all of the data or sources that I have right here verbatim versus using like a GPT or a project that still leverages the training data from an OpenAI or an Anthropic or a Gemini along with potential internet data as well. So it can convolute the results, so to say, if all you're trying to do is extract data from sources. That's what Notebook LM excels at. And so what you can do to start is you can just do something 
simple in the chat box here and say, act as a chat bot that perfectly mimics the voice, tone, and style of the person from the sources. I'll leave this prompt in the video description below if you wanna try this out yourself. And so then you can obviously follow up and do whatever you want. What are the core pillars of this? What is Ryan Dozer's signature catchphrase for reviewing AI tools? And you'll notice it's already pulling in citations from my entire history of my ChatGPT account. Again, that is one of the big powers of Notebook LM here is its ability to extract and synthesize data verbatim versus using external training data. Now, of course, we can leverage all of the other features that Notebook LM offers, like audio overview, if you want to create an AI podcast based on these sources, video overview, flashcards, infographics, slide decks, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole for the purposes of this video. But if you want to take this to the next level here and not just use this chat bot that I believe is powered by Gemini 3 Flash and not the more advanced models like Thinking or Pro, is if we come into Google Gemini, go ahead and click the add files option here, click notebook LM, find that recent notebook that we were just working on, ChatGPT data, click add, and then go ahead and change your model here to thinking or pro, I just leave it on thinking for now. And then now the sky's the limit. You can literally use your entire account history of ChatGPT right inside Google Gemini. And so what I'd recommend you do, I guess this is, your use case is probably different than me, but this is what I've done, is I've created what's called a brand DNA construction kit prompt. I'll leave that in the video description below. I'm gonna copy this, go back to Gemini, make sure my notebook LM data is right here, paste that prompt in here, and then go ahead and click enter. Now you might be confused in asking yourself, well, Ryan, why would you do that? What was the point? Well, let's say I want to take all of my account history from ChatGPT, leverage that data into a Google Gem or a Claude project, or maybe inputs for an automation module and make N8 or Zapier, or, you know, maybe training a, let's say an AI agent for Claude code, for instance, like creating another MD file with all of the history of my ChatGPT account. Those are just some things I'm thinking of off the top of my head, but the opportunities here are endless now that we have our entire account history of ChatGPT. And so this just created a personal brand style guide that literally mimics what I, you know, my writing style, my tone. It looked at all of the examples, word proximity, reading level, structure, based on everything that I've done in my three plus year history of using ChatGPT. That data is extremely valuable. And that's the main takeaway of what I'm trying to explain in this video is if you're looking to ditch ChatGPT, you can export that data and then make sure you get separate files that aren't large enough, like that huge JSON file where you can upload into separate sources. You can also do the same process with Claude, but if I click add files here, the nice part about Claude is it goes ahead and accepts all 14 of those MD files and it's not capped at that 10 limit like Google Gemini is. And so again, you can literally come down here, copy this prompt or do whatever you want. I'd recommend being on Opus, having thinking mode on, paste that prompt right here, click enter, and we can now use Claude with all of that data as well. I hope you guys are seeing why this is extremely valuable here and why I would want to even do this in the first place as I'm not very optimistic about where OpenAI and ChatGPT is going in the future. So I'd rather be involved in other ecosystems like Google's ecosystem or Anthropic's ecosystem with Claude, but without dismissing that valuable three plus year account history of my day-to-day -day uses in ChatGPT. So if you've made it this far into the video, I truly appreciate you. If you found any form of value here, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I also wanna hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you gonna end up ditching ChatGPT Plus like I am in 2026? I'm just really curious to hear your thoughts. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.